three golf swing death moves. Golf swing moves that are killing golfers, making golf really harder. This is a simple golf lesson that's gonna help you make some better moves and stop those disaster shots. Come driver, come iron, come pit shots to be fair. So the first death move that amateurs make in their backswing to kick them off is arm depth. They tend to get their arms quite deep. They tend to let their trail elbow bend a lot and the arms either get deep, they can go a little kind of out in front of them here, but still very deep in towards them, say from this camera, but generally it's flat shoulder term, deep arms tucked in. And the reason this is such a difficult move for amateurs to control time and time again is from here, they tend to then try and create space on the way down and you've guessed it, it's this move, flicking forward, careering down, horrible cuts, horrible fats, horrible fins, horrible shots. So how can we fix death move number one? tucked in here. Trail shoulder holds the key and trail hand and wrist can hold the key here as well. Just take the club so you're holding down the bottom of the grip. So trail hand only down the grip for control. And what I want you to do on the back swing is open up this trail shoulder and try and get the butt end of the club so pointing straight down behind you here, like if someone was stood behind you like this camera, like you're spearing them. So if you think about depth, arm depth getting too deep and stuck, they're often in here. We want to try and get this opening up, this away from you, because now look what's happening with my depth. It's higher, not quite so much down here. And the trail wrist going this way, extending a lot more on that backswing with less trail elbow bend is what's gonna allow you to create that width on the backswing to allow you hopefully to follow a similar pattern on the downswing, which is where we see the better pass from. From in here, well, I'm not gonna hit it from in here. I mean, it just wouldn't work. I have to do adjustments to try and get out to the ball. We need to get rid of them. Trail shoulder, feel like that pushes back and opens up, really open up trail shoulder. Don't get kind of stuck in here with it bent forward, lots of people do. And then in turn, butt in that club back to that target. Other way you can do it as well, if that feels quite difficult, is just use your lead hand to flick that club back. So as you pull back, pull the handle with your finger just this way and let that elbow open up with the shoulder. Getting back here, we're gonna get more width, much better chance of making a good downswing. Death move number two, our wrist. Lead wrist extension. So lead wrist bending up this way a lot. For most golfers, and you will see world-class golfers with lead wrist extension, don't worry, they've got matchups that balance it out, often strong grips, much more complicated. For most amateurs, balancing strong grips with lots of extension, well, they're generally not good golfers if they're balancing that. It's only the very few can do it. But if you're one of those people, keep playing good golf. Making a backswing as they extend lead wrists more, just turns loft onto the club face. Turning loft onto the club face is gonna make the ball go to the sky upwards. People then try and square that face up a little bit as well to take that loft off by flicking forwards. This elbow goes back, hand goes forwards mega crashes. We see all manner of crashes from there. The more we can get trail or lead wrist, feeling like it flattens with lead arm. For most golfers, this is the ticket to more penetrating, longer, better struck golf shots. Like when you see golfers a lot, when I was teaching full, full time, this was just a staple diet for so many golfers. Like if someone came in and didn't have to do this, you were a bit like, well, hang on. Someone is getting the lead wrist not extended. No, I better think, now what do I do? So a simple way of working on this, just take a tee, put it between first finger and middle finger there, so it's pointing up at the ground in your lead hand. Take the club, grip it, try and get this tee as far out in front of you as possible, so don't let it go kind of down pointing at the ground as you do it, try and feel like it's pointing this way. Then as you make your backswing, try and get to the top of the backswing where you feel like this tee is pointing up to the sky. If I extend lead wrist, start pointing out this way. Having this visual and this feeling, so I could literally just touch it, yeah, that's up to the sky. So the mixture of looking at it and then being able to feel it as you move is where you really move the needle. You can even hit shots with this. I wouldn't hit them too hard, just feel nice little gentle shots where you feel like you're turning that tee up to the ground, uh, sorry, up to the sky. Even on the downswing as well, I feel like you leave it up to the sky for a lot longer. Lots of golfers can get it right here. As soon as they pull on the club, they start they're pointing the tee out this way. So you can hit a few shots with this, trying to get that tee to work. And what you're gonna notice from my shots, if I just hit a little one here, it's drawing off to the left because this makes me exaggerate a move that I do already. So it gives me overdraw. For most golfers, that exaggeration, that feeling of turning it more 
is what brings them back to the middle. It's in your pocket. It can do more than just tee the ball up. And the last F move again, driver or iron knees apply for all of these clubs. It's the tuck under downswing. So what I mean by that, you could make these great backswings good wrists if you start tucking your hips under on the downswing. So start trying to get your pelvis under your upper body as you start your downswing and turn. This is where we get these kind of bunched up hits handle really high or people what they often do is they tuck the pelvis under and then rotate causing again the classic kind of duffy ones. So trying to feel pelvis tilts as you turn and actually on your downswing trying to use that tilt to allow you to turn in a way that brings the club down more this way rather than this way is so powerful for golfers. And the way I like to do this with players is really try and get the club back down to this last parallel on the downswing. So in a practice swing, get the club down to last parallel on the downswing and stop and feel like you're still bent over. So feel like you're still kind of tipping this way. Now, lots of golfers do this and they watch videos on this and they say, oh, I feel like I'm gonna just whack the ground if I do that. What tends to happen with golfers with this drill? First times they do it, they kind of get down here and they feel too low and they do, they just career into the ground and then they run away from it. The idea on the downswing with this pelvis is if you can create some tilt in it as you start down, often for golfers, it allows them then to spring out. It's the springing out that creates those better strikes. When golfers tend to get very tucked under as they start the downswing, so really push those hips forwards, get it aligned with their torso a lot more and rotate. They're the ones going that way. They struggle to get out of it. Because basically, if I was going to jump, so when I hit the ball, I want to kind of feel like I'm using vertical force, jumping a little bit. I'm going to go like this. See how I'm compressing down to go up. I'm not going to jump by going kind of like this. That feels so weak and unable to move. A really good drill. You'll see some tall players doing this. You've seen Tiger doing this. Justin Rose is close to doing this. He's kind of down here, does it? He really exaggerates it or did back in the day. Feeling like as you start down, you're getting some crunch in this angle here to come through. For so many golfers, what we start to see is better strikes, better shots, and all in all better golf. The killer moves are fixed, but your golf swing isn't completely fixed yet. If you want to understand how to hit your driver better, this video has got three simple tips that golfers are really enjoying.